This year, we come again. And the battles continue. Indeed, they've been enhanced. We have been speaking for a long time about the reform of this institution and about the recognition that there were only a quarter of the states that now exist when this institution was formed. Earlier this week, President Biden spoke of the need to reform the Security Council. We call an echo for that, but we go further because we believe that a Security Council that retains the power of veto in the hands of a few will still lead us to war as we have seen this year. And therefore the reform must not simply be in its composition, but also be in the removal of that veto. We also believe that the recognition of the G7 countries and the G20 countries as the informal subcommittee of governance of this world, if it is to be fair, must recognize that no longer can we accept that persons call year after year after year for the inclusion of the people of Africa and African descent to be included in the G7 and G20. For how can a world have at its core a subcommittee that excludes more than 1.4, 1.5 billion people of the world and expect it to reflect fairness and transparency in its decision making? We ask that the determination be made by those countries who must understand that if we are to move from possibilities to realities, we must embrace a transparent framework that allows our people who are losing faith in their institutions and in the governance of this world to understand that fairness means something. That fairness means the ability for all to have a voice and that we can't only speak to it within the corridors of democracy within the nation state but it will only mean something when it also is reflected in our international community we live in a world as i said last year where the disparity in income is too great and we live in a world where some are even benefiting from the crises disproportionately and egregiously and we must ask ourselves, therefore, whether the time has not come for a review of the settlement of the Bretton Woods institutions that no longer serve the purpose in the 21st century that they served in the 20th century. That they served when they were catering to a quarter of the nation states that are now members of this August institution. We ask ourselves whether the time has not come for our voices to act collectively, to demand that through the boards of directors of the respective institution. And why do I say so? The International Bank for Reconstruction and Development is really what the World Bank is. And maybe if we referred to that continuously, we would remind ourselves that the purpose of reconstruction and development must be appropriate to the century in which we live. And the century in which we live does not only demand of us the eradication of poverty, which remains a noble goal, because we believe that unless we take responsibility for ourselves, unless we accept that we are the world, we're not going to see a change.